Yo, what's going on, guys? It's your boy, a typical security guard, coming to you with today's debrief. And today's debrief is going to be about NRA basic instructor training. What did I think of it? How did I, you know, feel about the class? Was it worth it? And we're going to get into that today. I want to thank you guys for joining us. As always, remember our goal here is to help educate, motivate, train, and inform new and willing to learn security guards so that we can create a better industry. We can close that gap between security and law enforcement. And at the end of the day, we can all make more money and that's the goal, right? We wanna make more money. So uh, I signed up for the NRA um, basic instructor course, okay? Now this is the prerequisite course that you have to do if you want to become an instructor in any other disciplines. Now, if you guys are aware, or even if you're not aware, let me just go ahead and inform you that there is a, a like a laundry list of things that you can become certified in uh, to train under the NRA banner. And if you look online, there's, there's varying degrees of people's feelings about whether or not this is either A, necessary, or B, if it's legitimate and it's useful. So, I wanted to come on here today. I've gone through the last three days of training uh, and I just kind of wanted to share my thoughts on it. Um, so, you know, I had somebody that commented that I don't normally ever, you know, bring up negative troll type comments. You know, if you start anything, specifically if you start something like a YouTube channel where you're putting yourself out there, you're sharing your information, you're sharing your thoughts, you're sharing your feelings on things, you open yourself up to criticism. You open yourself up to trolling. That's just a, a normal aspect of life. And it's something that's amplified uh, more so here on social media. I don't normally get into that, but someone responded to a post that I had put up yesterday about being in class. And they said something to the effect that no one takes NRA training seriously. And that's kind of a, a general consensus that I've gotten from a lot of people, specifically younger people the millennial crowd right you know a lot of people as we get more and more into this politicized space and, and guys listen i'm as big of a two-way advocate as anyone most of you know that i am very much involved in fighting measure 114 which is the country's strictest gun control measure uh to come through uh, most of you guys know that I am I am named in that federal lawsuit. I am named as a as a plaintiff against the state of Oregon. I've been working diligently uh, to fight Measure 114, and I am an advocate for two way rights. So I understand that there are a lot of people that have issues with the NRA. There's a lot of negative history with the NRA, specifically for my community, for the Black community. There are some horrible things that the NRA has been involved in. There are some horrible things that the NRA has not gotten involved in that I believe some people could look at and say that that is either racially based or politically based. I get that, okay? I understand all of those things. That is everyone's right to have that opinion. However, and this is the important thing, when it comes to the Second Amendment, we do not have a lot of organizations that are out there fighting for our second amendment rights and we have even fewer that have the financial background the financial backing rather or the political cachet to actually do anything in terms of fighting anti-2a legislation or fighting for second amendment rights the nra is perfectly poised and in position to do that i know there are many other organizations out there i don't want this to become a political speech but that is just my quick disclaimer that i understand that some people have personal political philosophical historical issues with the nra i do not believe that that has anything to do with the subject that we're talking about right now on whether or not the training itself is important if it's viable or if it's good and just and positive so i want to just kind of go over the five things, um, the five things that I experienced, okay, and why I feel these are important aspects of being an instructor, okay? So let's get right into it. I'm going to start with number five. Number five is that it's a basic level instructor training, okay? Now, you have to remember when it comes to people across the board, no matter what we're talking about, 
everyone has to start somewhere, right? And some of you who are, you know, awesome shots and you've been around firearms your entire life. Some of you have done amazing things in your military career. Some of you have, you know, law enforcement experience or contractor experience or all kinds of, of information that you've been exposed to. And you are an absolute phenomenal teacher in and of itself right now. The vast majority of people in this country who make the decision to become an instructor, to become a teacher, to try and help out in advancing gun ownership, they're not necessarily cut from that cloth. And so as an organization, what the NRA has done is they've said, look, we are going to create a base level, basic instructor training class so that anyone from any walk of life, any demographic, any socioeconomic platform can come in and day one can understand how to set up and teach a class. And now what I liked about uh, the basic instructor training class is that, you know, everything is written out for you. Everything from this is where you get your materials. This is, you know, how you set up a class. This is how you uh, write a lesson plan. Now, for some people, again, this is just common knowledge. But if you're one of those people where you're not comfortable or you don't even know where to start, I can see where this is a great opportunity and a great option. Uh, the fourth thing was hands-on situational training, right? So if you guys watched my video that I put up yesterday or maybe the day before, one of the first exercises that I had to do was explain how to unload a firearm to a group of people who had never been around firearms before. But the caveat was I could not use my hands. I had to have my hands in my pockets, right? So most of the time, like if you're you know, demonstrating how to unload a firearm and you're holding that firearm, it's so easy to be like, you know, here's where the slide release is, or sorry, the mag release is, here's the slide lock, uh, you know, this is the trigger, this is the trigger guard. If you don't have access to actually hold that firearm, you're able to use your hands. You guys see me, I talk a lot with my hands, right? But if you take those two things away, the only thing that you have now is just your audible voice. You're able to talk to people, but it forces you to be more articulate. It forces you to be more descriptive. It also forces you to scale back on what you're saying that's not important. Sometimes when I make these videos, I could probably take that advice. But I thought that that was a great exercise and well worth the money because each one of us that got up, excuse me, each one of us that got up during our turn we had to do something different. I had to explain without using my hands. The next person had to explain how to unload a firearm without using his voice, right? The next person had to explain how to unarm, uh, unload a firearm by demonstrating. Someone else had to teach someone else how to do it. So putting people with varying backgrounds of ability, ability to stand in front of the class, ability to talk to people, ability to lead, these are all things that if you're going to be an instructor, if you're going to be a teacher, no matter what level of teacher, what level of instructor, these are things that you have to do. Again, at the very beginning, the fifth thing, base level, where to start. Everybody doesn't know that. The fourth thing, it puts you in situations where right from the very beginning on the day, on the first day, they're having you stand in front of a class. They're having you talk in front of a class. They're having you answer questions. They're having you participate and they're having you articulate. And those are things that if you're going to do this in any capacity, you have to be able to do that. That can't be done in an online Zoom class or a class where it's, it's strictly online. I thought that that was very, very beneficial. Uh, number three, the NRA offers a level of legitimacy. Now, any of us, can teach firearms, right? I would say that if you're, you know, a husband, a boyfriend, or a father, at some point in time, if you're watching these videos and you're in the two-way space, you are going to instruct another person on how to operate a firearm. The thing about doing this in terms of a business or doing this in terms of, of working for an organization, the NRA and having that NRA certification, it offers a level of legitimacy, so much so, that if you're going to teach a concealed carry class in most states, you have to be a NRA certified instructor. Now, until something changes where gun policy or USCCA or, 
um, I don't know, Gun Owners of America. At some point when some other organization or some other organizations get to the level of, of, of prominence and notoriety and political power and financial backing of the NRA, that is the standard bearer of base level knowledge and understanding, right? The NRA is heavily involved in Hunter's education, heavily involved in Boy Scouts of America, you know, and say what you will about any of these organizations, but in terms of of staying power and, and, and historical context of being involved in teaching firearm safety, take the politics out of it, just in the terms of that, that name still carries weight and it carries legitimacy. If you're going to be training in firearms, you're going to be teaching people outside of your own family. This at least gives you, um, it at least gives you the option and the opportunity to say that you have gone through some standard area of training. And I think that that's important if you're going to be doing this outside of your own individual family. Number two, it sets a minimum bar of operating for instructors. Again, a minimum bar. I know a lot of people out there are forward operators, you know, former badasses, you're a Navy SEAL, you're you know, sheriff's deputy, you kick indoors. I get that. But everybody doesn't have that background. Everyone doesn't have that experience. This sets a minimum bar. If you are teaching concealed carry, if you're teaching um, uh, pistol training at a gun range or at some sort of training academy, this sets a minimum standardized bar uh, of, of operating for those people. I think that's very, very in, in, important in any aspect of life, in any aspect of training, in any aspect of schooling or education, there is a minimum bar. You know, if you're going to be a professor, at minimum, you have to have your master's degree or at minimum, you have to have your doctorate degree. These are all minimum bars. Now, when you clear that bar, it is up to you and incumbent upon you to be further trained, further certified and better at what you do. And that's where the personal uh, responsibility of what we each do comes into play. I think that what they're asking in this basic level instructors course you know, it's not difficult. It's not, it's not overly hard, but what they're forcing you to do is meet a minimum level of standard. Uh, and I think that's a good idea. All right. Uh, the number one thing provides standardized resources. Now, this I think was more so important before the digital age. You know, right now we live in a, in a, in a time where you can pretty much go online and you can find almost anything. You can create almost anything at the drop of a hat. It does not take, you know, access to any one, uh, you know, it, it, you, you can pretty much get anything you need at this point in time, right? I think that 20, 30 years ago, having one area where everything was, was standardized and you were able to get resources like wall hangers or uh, PowerPoints or flipboards, all the things that were utilized in training 20, 30 years ago, I can see where this was the absolute best option for you. Now, here in you know the year 2023, that's not necessarily the case, but everyone, again, from all demographics, all walks of life, all areas of ability, people are going to be creating programs, create, creating courses, creating businesses, and people are going to have anything and everything out there. I think that under the NRA banner, this gives just like a minimum um, area of standardized resources to where if you go to uh, gun range number one, gun range number two, gun range number three, no matter where you're going, if these are NRA certified instructors, there's a little bit of a standardization in terms of what they're teaching. Again, everyone has the opportunity uh, to move past that and beyond that, but I think it's good that all of the instructors who have these certifications all the way down that line of certifications that they offer you know, there's a little bit of a standardized practice there for the people who are training with them. My final takeaway on the class, this was the beginning instructor or beginner instructor uh, certification that I did. I also did another uh, firearm certification. I think that for people who have a lot of knowledge, for people who are uh, maybe in that millennial base who are used to running and gunning and things being a little bit more digital. 
I think that this probably will not be for you. I think that if you're like me, you're on that kind of cusp of, of Gen Z, my Gen Z, Gen X and millennial, right? Or, or whatever. If you're, if you're a little bit older, let's just say that. I think this is great for you. If you've never taught before, I think this is great for you. If you're looking to be better educated, one of the cool things about the class that I did last night, uh, we had access to like four or five different shotguns. We had a lever action. We had a brake action. We had a semi-automatic. We had a pump and we had a bolt action. I have never personally handled a bolt action rifle in my life. I've never handled a brake action and I've never handled a lever action ever. So that's three firearms that I had never held in my life. And by the end of the night, I could give a basic uh, explanation of how they worked, a demonstration on how to uh, clear and make safe. I could explain where the safeties were. I could explain how the action worked. You know, this is something that for me as a, as a gun enthusiast and someone who wants to be better educated, I, I had never been around those before. And just via this class, you know, I was able to, to not only be placed in the vicinity of those, but be able to handle them, get hands-on training, and be able to explain a lot more about them. We also talked about revolvers. We talked about semi-automatics. You know, had these firearms in my hand, able to, to break them down, to look at them, to talk about how they work, the actions, the functions. And there were so many people in my class who were who were way less educated on firearms than I was. And there was people who were way more. And it was great to see how everybody worked together to kind of bridge that gap. And that's something that we talk about here a lot, bridging that gap. So I would say on a scale of 10, 10 being an absolute knock it out of the park, I would give it a 6.5 to a 7. 6.5 to a 7. Only because a lot of the stuff I already knew, a lot of the stuff I felt like I, you know, was kind of was kind of redundant. But again, I completely understand why it's there. I understand why it's necessary. And I thought that it was a good class. I really did. Um, I'm not going to get into the secondary class that I did yesterday or last night rather and today, but I will say the basic instructor class, those are my five takeaways, my five points, why I think they're beneficial. And if you've never taught before, if you don't feel comfortable speaking in front of people, if you want to get into uh, facilitating concealed carry classes or helping people be better um, knowledgeable about the basics of firearms and firearm safety, I think it was very, very, very beneficial. And the instructor that led the class, he did a great job, phenomenal job. So that's my thought. That's my debrief for today. As always, thank you guys for tuning in. Remember to like, share, and subscribe. As always, watch your six. Remember to download the Security Guard Network app now available on iOS and Google Play and be great. Boom!